Welcome to the Tay Visuals Podcast, man. We got a special guest, shoe reseller, shoe plug, celebrity shoe plug, man. We got the Sneak Expressor here, Derek. I pronounce your name right, bro? Derek. Derek. And it's different with an eight. It's, it's different, That's man. That's how my daddy's shit was spelled, so, you know. For sure. Now, now, but first, shoe reseller, would you describe yourself as a shoe reseller? What is your title? I'm a reseller. All right, a reseller. So we got the first reseller on the podcast, man. We was trying to get this. Way from last year, um, and P. Lola, she um, recommended you. So before we get into this, I want to go into wh- when did you start reselling shoes? When did I first get into shoes yeah. and reselling? Yeah, we can say well, that. Well, I came home in like 2011, mm-hmm. and it was the Concourse came out, I believe. Mm-hmm. Speaking and of Michael bit, It was the Concourse, I believe. Right. So they had Oakwood, like, was jammed up with people. Mm-hmm. So we literally had to run from one side of the mall to the other. So you remember that release? Nah, I don't remember that. Oh, you don't? 2011? Yeah. I, I ain't really into shoes like that, but right. I know the kind. So that was, like, the first shoe, and I had a partner named Alexis and another partner named Dianesia. They got deep pads. Mm-hmm. So you know StockX wasn't a thing back then. Right. So I went on eBay. I'm like, man, that's going for $500. How much? Five hundred. It was going okay. for five. How much was they in the store? Retail was like one ninety something. Like okay. That. So I started following the game, but uh, as far as like LLC, did I LLC in seven seven twenty? All right. So while y'all watching this, if y'all tuning in on Apple, Spotify, y'all come to YouTube and watch us because we got um he brought some toys out to show y'all some shoes, but we are gonna get to that a little bit later. But if y'all watching, listening on Apple, or Spotify, tune in to YouTube and watch. But all right, the shoe game. I have a bunch of questions about the shoe game. Knock yourself out. <laughs> but when you um, LLC in 2020, how does that go when you resell the shoes? How, what was the process into LLC and saying, I'm going to make it a real business? Well, I hit up my uh, my CPE. I was like, man, I'm just about to make this a real thing mm-hmm. because I already had buzz going. Like I was getting like 15, 20 pairs mm-hmm. before I actually LLC it. I'm like... I did my research. I'm like, all right, I could get business funding if I, you know, do mm-hmm. it the correct way. So I pay business taxes and all that stuff too. Okay. And when when getting into this game, you the shoe plug, right. but you have a shoe plug because you have to get the shoes from somewhere as well. It's so it's so first. So shoe plug have another shoe plug, and it just keep going up. So how do you establish and get around to getting shoes from stores or other people? I buy. So you know what I mean by that? No. All right. Well, I have like. These automated machines mm-hmm. on my computer, like they, well, the time I bought them, it was going for 6K a piece. I got the best shit in the industry. <laughs> no, like real talk, talk like they got is. valid AIO. It was going for like 6.5. Mm-hmm. It's going for like 2,000 now because the industry that went down a little bit. And they what got, you said it was, valid what? Valor. What is that? It's like a, a, a all into one something? bot. Yeah, it's a software. All right. I had Rad, that was going for like 8K. Okay. I got a Trickle, it's going for three. And that's just like some of the best Yeezy supply. All right. And I got buys for foot sites, Dick Sporting Goods. I got a sneakers app buy it with 200 accounts. Mm-hmm. So I, I always hit 10 times, nine times out of 10. Okay. So I get all that for retail. And then like I go to the big conventions like Sneaker Con, mm-hmm. Sneaker Exit, and all Saturday that. Saturday on your page. Yeah. And like I buy from other resellers. All right. So, and I get a legit check there too. So all right. that's so how I do it. How do you keep up with all those things of like, Shoe when when new shoes dropping, uh, when old shoes that's really popular that drop, but it doesn't have high demand. How do how do you get your hands on that? I mean, like I get it off the box. Like all I gotta do is put the SKU number in mm-hmm. and let it run on release day, and they'll check out. Mm-hmm. And if I be like, all right, this shoe gonna go for five hundred dollars later online. Let me buy it off this person for like two fifty right now. Okay, I buy it, and you know. Uh, How long did it take you to get to that point of having all that, just having everything in line and knowing when shit coming out, knowing knowing the price you're gonna resell it for all that? Uh, From 2020 to the end of last year. All right, so when I LLC it, yeah, because you have to do trial and error, anything in the business. You know what I'm saying? Like when Mm -hmm. I first started this, I wasn't remember about making no money. I had money already. Mm -hmm. You know, this was just another venture for me. So I'm like, all right, I'm gonna take a year, like literally sit down and learn this, like. Mm-hmm. And boom, I got to the point where I'm at now. All right. Um, first, first thought. No, what was some big things that big, I guess, problems that you ran into? Uh, did you run into any problems? You say trial and error. Yeah, like, 
like I said, in 2020, the pandemic hit. Okay. So, as you see, the stores don't get nothing anymore. So, right. I wasn't, like, getting stuff for retail. It was kind of stagnant. Like, I was getting stuff here and there. Mm-hmm. And I woke up one day. I'm like, man, you know, there got to be a better way to do this. Mm-hmm. So, the first time I bought it, it was the uh, Jordan 5, the Fire Red 5s in March okay. when the pandemic first hit. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, all right, I checked out five pairs in a minute. Literally, it was 901, five pairs. I had to stop running because mm-hmm. <laughs> I only needed one size. So I'm like, all right, I'm going to keep, you know, learning this space. All right. And as I learn this space, progress and progress, and I was like, all right, I know I'm a hit now. You okay. know what I'm saying? Okay. Um, what about developing relationships with other resellers? Because at the end of the day, they are a competition, but some people work together. Like you say, you buy shoes from other resellers. How do you establish relationship with other shoe players? I don't look at it as competition. I look mm-hmm. at everybody's family. Like, you got to understand, in New Orleans, we have, like, four or five good shoe plugs. You got me, you got mm-hmm. Derek Kicks, 3Y, Sneaker Gaze of Paris, and if I left somebody else's name out, my bad. Mm-hmm. That's what came to my mind. So it's not really no competition. Like, mm-hmm. we'll probably hit each other up and, like, what you pricing this shit for? Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know. Wow, you got this size. I need this for a pre-order. It's, it's really like a family thing. It's okay, never comp- compete with nobody. Do do people even go into stores and buy shoes now with all the it, shoe plugs out? Stores don't have nothing. You that's saw the what, article. Right, that's what you I'm saw saying. the article when Nike took everything out the stores. No, I didn't see that. Yeah, Nike took all the Nike product and Jordan product out of like Foot Lock and shit. Mm-hmm. So Foot Locker, they trying to sell like Lamelo balls and. Get Adidas contract to get Yeezys and stuff like that. So it really don't, bro. I can't tell you the the last time I went and bought a shoe out the mall. I know, bro. It's like when you, it's like when you go in the store, like you really don't see like too many like exclusive shoes that like resellers be selling. They don't have like no Yeezy unless you're going into like a flight club or expensive like shoe store like that. Then if you go to a flight club, you're gonna be paying way more than what you'll be paying me. Exactly. So it don't make no sense. Exactly. Like with the whole stock X situation. Is it, are you read you read on Thanks, that? We're gonna get to that. Right, we're, gonna, we're gonna get to that. Thanks. Um speaking of that, um before we before we get to the stock X and Nike lawsuit, when um do you sell off stock X? No, I don't need to. I got a customer base. All right, so when de- when developing, I guess, relationships with customers, because I'm sure you have people who just come right back each time shoes coming out. When shoes come out, how did how do you decide to like Price eat you. Well, all right. So I do use StockX for that because StockX has the green button where you buy, mm-hmm. you add tax and shipping. So I think in my head, all right, if retail going to be this, it's going to go for this. Mm-hmm. I add the tax and shipping at probably about six, 50, 60 more dollars because it's in hand. Mm-hmm. And I know it's coming from a legit website. All right. So that's just, that's me. You know what I'm saying? My other people hire because, you know, they got whatever they got going on. Okay. Well, um, do you remember the highest? Pair of shoes you sold for? What was the highest price you got for them? Um, I sold a, a pair that's here, the mm-hmm. Travis Scott's. Okay. I had like 10 pairs on release there. Mm-hmm. So, you know, they was going for like 1300 when they first came out. Now they peaked at like 2000 mm-hmm. So that was what? Wow, 24, 36. That was, yeah, that was like 72. 72 and what was retail? 190. 180, 190. For that? Yeah. Dang, I thought that shit was higher than that. Yeah, 180, 190. Um, how. Do you know the amount of um, pairs that um, retail usually have? Because a lot of people run into problems with them retail. They be like, we only have 50 pairs when it releases. And people, you know, they be having the long lines. Used to have the long lines, at least when yeah, I was that's in when high it was, Yeah, that's when they was calling their partners. And I was like, yeah, I got this. Mm-hmm. Wow, well, come get them. I'm going to hold it for you. Yeah. You know what <laughs> I'm saying? You ever had a um, plug like that at Foot Locker or something? I mean, <laughs> it worked for us. <laughs> Thanks. All right, now, let's get to the StockX Nike. Newly lawsuit because Nike is filing a lawsuit against StockX for allegedly selling fake shoes and something to deal with NFTs is a, a lot. Yeah, the NFTs that. fake too. Yeah, a lot of um the NFTs attached to physical products. I think that's what Nike um suing for. But there's a lot of smaller details in that lawsuit. What's your thoughts on StockX and them allegedly selling fake shoes? I'm gonna keep it G with you. These big web, these big platforms like StockX and mm-hmm. Goat, they don't bat a thousand all the time. Mm-hmm. All right, you had a job before, right? You right. ever was pissed off with your job? Like, fuck it, whatever happened, happened that day. Yep. So think about somebody that been at StockX for five years. Like, all right, I'm going to let all this shit pass a day. Right. You know what I'm saying? It don't affect me. Mm-hmm. All right, so that's the problem with them. You know, mm-hmm. they don't, they've been doing that for years, bro. They have a page that calls out everybody. True. That's like, yeah, I, I don't know if you've seen it. So mm-hmm. it's just coming to the light because Nike said it. Mm-hmm. Because the patent bridge was a highly 
develop fake shoe. And that's another thing with New Orleans. A lot of people around here, knowingly and unknowingly, wearing fakes. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Now, the people that unknowingly know, they probably got it from stockings. Like, oh, I got mine from stockings. Ooh, what? Mm-hmm. But you don't know if they're authenticated. You know what I'm saying? Green tag. I, I'm yeah. good. <laughs> yeah. Like, you know? <laughs> Facts. Now, um, have you ever ran across a customer who had problems with you and your shoes unknowingly being fake unknowingly? No, because I know where that shit come from. Mm-hmm. And like, people, like, brother, there at one time, a dude tried to be slick. He wore them two times. And he was like, man, these shoes fake. Why can I get my money back? I told him, son, don't, don't play with me like that. Mm-hmm. That was, like, really the only time. Would you, would you, why would he say they fake if you wore them twice? A <laughs> That's crazy. Now, my, um, I told my um, partner yesterday we was in the gym. He said, um, I told him I, I had a um, shoe plug coming on the show. And... He, and I told him about the stock X situation, and he was like, "Man, if stock X selling fake shoes, everybody selling fake fucking shoes. Cause stock X, they the biggest, um, they the biggest thing." And he wanted me to ask you, "Have you ran across other resellers who had fake shoes? Like, if you had sneaker kind or some shit, you walk past the table, you man, like, brother, they fake. They got some locally, uh huh. And they, of course, yeah, like brother, when if you come to like these big conventions and you got fakes, they kicking you out the door. Now, how can they tell, brother? Like." You could smell the shoe. Mm-hmm. Like, they'll have differences. Off. You got to think, when these shoes get in front of Y3 fake factories, mm-hmm. like, I'm deep into this. I know how this goes. Mm-hmm. When they get to in front of fake factories overseas, they can't make it 100% real because that's a lawsuit. Right. They have to make it 99.8. Mm-hmm. So, you're going to have some differences. Like, it might be the stitching. It might be, like, see that? Uh-huh. If it, like, really, like, is deep in your hands, that means the draw is more fake. That's mm-hmm. one detail. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's certain stuff you got to look for with shoes. All right. And you teaching me something, because I don't know. Now, um, what is the most popular shoe size to get for you? Because a lot of people, I saw, um, I searched this on the internet. They say the 10 and the 9 is pretty popular. What's yeah, the most popular? T- men, 10, 9, grade school, 7, 5 through 7. Mm-hmm. That 4, 4 and a half. It sells, but you know, it really don't do too much. You know what right. I'm saying? So when you um, buy shoes, um, you go for that 10 usually. I mean, I do random sizes because I go for stuff that I know going to sell. Like yesterday, they had the Neapolitan 3s. Mm-hmm. This is like the Mochas, like the Mocha 3s, but it got pink on it. All right. I don't know if you know what I'm talking about. No. So, <laughs> saying, ain't no, sh- ain't, ain't, really, like ain't really no shooter. You, you know? mocha th- the Mocha 3s? Yeah, what it's like, like that. It's like a Jordan 3, but it's, I don't know, I'm I guess you probably put a picture. See, I probably not. Yeah, I probably know if I see it, but I don't know the name. So like that. stuff that I know going to sell, like Yeezy slides or whatever. Mm-hmm. You get all sides because you got the clientele. Yeah, so I'm like random, mm-hmm. woman, whatever, come come. Now, now I seen on your page you have a lot of pictures with the ones. Is that your favorite shoe to resell? Because ones became so popular over the past. That few was years. then. That was then, but now mm-hmm. Joy Ones did. Yeah, that's like great. believe People it or not, dunks now. That's why I'm about to tell you. <laughs> that's don'ts and Yeezys, my two biggest your digs right now. Yeah, but I can't lie. That, that was crazy because the Jordan ones had to wait like I, I would say like from like, like 2017 yeah, to 2020 like, to the pandemic, and then everybody started getting back on the dunks. Dunks used to be one hundred dollars, not a one eighty, two twenty, shit like that. No, because look, the dunk is the cheap alternative. Because right. you look at it as a Jordan one low, right. and then grade school pair like nine hundred dollars. Men pair is a hundred dollars. Resale on could go from. 180 to 300. Mm-hmm. So, would you rather pay 300 for a dunk or 500 for a one? When it's basically the same thing. Exactly. And I mean, they got way more colorways and dunks. It's more stylish. But they're going to end up running a dunk in the ground, too, mm-hmm. in about three or four more years. I can see it happening. Okay. Um, do you ever have like any low key favorite shoes that you think going to pop but don't pop? Um. Like you be like, man, let me buy these. They low key fire. A lot of people don't have them. Jordan Foes. Jordan Foes. Yeah. Do they do real well on the market? That's the new wave, bro. Mm-hmm. Like, say they had the Oreo Fours that came out last year. I know what you're talking about with them. Bro, I know them. you saw how fast he jumped up, though? This <laughs> no. shoe's like $500 now. What was the retail? $190. Damn. So the UNC Fours, <laughs> they like $500. Um, they had the Red Thunder that just came out in January. They're in the threes. They're going to mm-hmm. go up to five something. And Saturday that's coming up, they have a pair right here. Mm-hmm. It's like in the threes now before it come out. So I know what it's going to do. Okay. Um, with um, 
Jordan, Michael Jordan, in his partnership with Nike, I think I don't want to misquote this, but I think I saw this that he gets. I really, I really don't want to say the number because I'm not sure he gets like. I think it's some cent of a dollar from each shoe that Nike sells, each Jordan that they sell. Do you feel that's uh, any um, accrues? They say like fifty million a year from jo- the Jordan shoe. Do you feel that's a good number for Jordan and all, from what he did for the Nike? Um, I mean, I'm gonna keep it real with you. I don't think he can. He on prison and stuff. And then his son has two stores. You you heard about the trophy room stuff? No. You didn't hear about that? Oh, uh-uh. well, that's one of the shoes I got. I'm up. We're going to talk about that then. Mm-hmm. So I don't think he kept because they allow him to open stores, and he's been doing this for so much, so long. So, uh, you know, that's like probably money golf with now. Mm-hmm. Don't care about that. <laughs> no, for real. I mean, he owned the Charlotte Bob. I mean, what day is the Bob? No, the, the Hornets. The, the Hornets. Yeah, he mm-hmm. owned them. So it's like whatever. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? That's pocket change to him right now. Facts. And, uh, you said he owned prison. That's the other Michael Jordan. <laughs> a lot of people say that, but that's the white guy. But they got the same name now. I want to get to some of these shoes you brought here. Right. Let's bring um out of pair. You see the trophies. Bring them out. Let's see what they look like. Let the people see. My box messed up, but this is my personal. I personally got it from Trophy Room. Here go the receipt. Mm-hmm. Here go the card. Um, this is the shoe. Was they have a war? No, I. Ain't. <laughs> uh-uh. I mean, I'm see the up- bottom. The bottom one? No, I ain't never one. I, I mean, I could put them on. My, I put them on my tables for display at sneaker kind, but like I got them directly from Michael Jordan store because mm-hmm. I know people that work for them. So it, you know, they gave me my pet for retail, but it was like you could never sell it. Okay. And I haven't gotten a chance to wedge yet because you know this shoe going for like two point eight. Mm-hmm. So it was going for four K when it first came out. Are so, you ever gonna wear? Yeah, I'm gonna wear. Them. I'm gonna wear them eventually. Okay. I just you know you gotta wear certain shit for certain shit. All right. And it was like, yeah, I haven't found, uh, you know, the right, you dig the way I'm yet. Okay. Um, now, what type of event do you wear those shoes to? <laughs> uh, me, mm-hmm. I'm planning on wearing them to like a big rapper, like album party, party or something, or something like party, that, something. like something. But this, I don't, I know you haven't heard much that's going on with this shoe. Mm-hmm. So they had leaked photos going around of like Marcus Jordan mm-hmm. backdooring these pairs, like selling these pairs to other resellers. Mm-hmm. For like fifteen hundred, and he supposedly made eighteen million that day, or some goofy shit like that. <laughs> so say some goofy shit. <laughs> no, for real, because they had like somebody leaked some photos of them at a hotel or something like and that. He was just so slinging them, huh? Yeah, he was slinging them, bro. Eighteen million? How many pairs he had to sell for that? I mean, Damn. bro, they supposedly had twenty thousand pairs with the with the uh, blue laces. Mm-hmm. So I, I only was able to get one pair for retail. You know what I'm okay. saying? So I don't know how many he sold. But they say he had, like, Benjamin Kicks and all of them now. Okay. Now, um, what is your favorite pair of Jordans? My favorite pair? Mm-hmm. Like, all time? What number, I would say? Jordan 12s. Okay. And what, and what is your favorite um, pair, a newly popular shoe? What They've been kind of popular for a minute, but Kanye has came on the shoe scene with the Yeezys. Basically took over the game. And he run this shit. Yeah, it's, like, over it's the game. crazy. Like, what's your favorite pair of Yeezys? Uh, the fall runners. And what do you think is better right now? The Jordans, because Jordan has been lasting forever since the 1980s, the late 80s, and Kanye has been taking over the 2000s, the late 2000s, I should say. Who do you think has better longevity right now? Kanye. Kanye? Because, simply because his shoes, they retail cheaper. Well, everybody went up $10 this year because of supply and demand. Mm-hmm. But his shoes are cheaper. Like, a pair of slides was $70. Mm-hmm. But they resell more, and also they're more comfortable, and they're more stylish. Mm-hmm. I mean, you could pull off so many fits with phone runners, slides, 350s, as opposed to Jordan that's bulky as hell. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. I mean, don't get me wrong. Jordan not going to go nowhere. Right. Never going to go nowhere. So is Yeezy brand. But as far as, like, customer-wise, mm-hmm. you're going you're gonna to sell more Yeezys than anything. Okay. Um, let's um, bring out another pair of the shoes you bought, and... Um, give a little story of why you brought these. All right. Well, these don't release till Saturday. Mm-hmm. This is the Jordan 4 Military Black. Mm-hmm. This is the shoe I was telling you about that's in the threes. This is a six and a half. It's for a customer. Okay. So, so uh, I project this shoe going to be in the fives by the end of this year. Okay. Show it to the camera a little bit. Yeah. I the project this shoe going to be in the fives by the end of the year. Okay. And what is what you say is retailing for? One, two, uh, twenty or something? Grade school. Let's see what grade school is. 
think. 160. Okay. 160, yeah. And they're going to be in a five for grade school. Well, no, five in men's grade oh, school yeah. is going to be in the, like, the fours or something like that. Okay. It always happens, bro. Mm-hmm. Like, this is why shoes go up. Because mm-hmm. the more pairs that get worn, mm-hmm. the dead stock pairs, that's what, like, you know, they make the value go up. Mm-hmm. So and what, it, what does um, dead stock mean? Unworn. All right. Basically. Okay. Now, let's bring out the last pair. And same for these. Uh, this is my Travis Scott ones. Mm-hmm. I haven't worn these yet either, but this is my favorite shoe in my in my collection. Mm-hmm. That's what the back was Nike check, right? Yeah. It's a, look, I got a legit check that sneaker kind. I had got it off his website for his birthday drop. Mm-hmm. So, and that was also my birthday month. So, I just, you know, I haven't found a place to wear these too. That's one of your favorite artists or something? Uh, you nah. just like the shoes? Yeah, I just like the shoe. Like, my favorite is artist Lil Baby. Okay. Um, what, what, um, you said that's your favorite shoes. What, why are they your favorite shoes? What, what's so special about Because it? I got them for retail. I paid one. <laughs> <laughs> I got a deal for them. Yeah, yeah, I paid like one, 180 for them. Uh-huh. You see everybody West. paying thousand. Yeah, and it was going for like 13. So I'm like, yeah, all right, bet. Okay. But I was able to get multiple for retail too. All right. Now, when having so many shoes, do you, um, I guess ever have like, do you have, like, a studio or a space where you keep all your shoes at, like, lined up, or you just have them in your room or some shit? I can't really talk about that, but they're good. Oh, right. <laughs> have you ever had a problem running into somebody, running into sell, selling to somebody, and they're trying to um, take your shoe, rob you from your shoes? We're just going to be shooting at each other. Ain't nothing to it. <laughs> and where, where does your, um, I guess, your customer base come from? Uh, I'm going to keep it gangster with you, bro. Mm-hmm. Really, other cities because, like, I don't know if you saw my page, but like, me and Lil Meech, we like this. Yep, you know what I'm saying? And me and Lil B, like, I be by their houses and shit. Mm-hmm. So, like, they introduce me to people. I go to conventions out of town. So, like, that's how, you know, I'm starting to get, Marketing, like, yeah, shit, over. Connecting with people. Yeah. Okay. And you, you mentioned the um, celebrity Lil Meech, actor. You saw the, um, some sports players I seen on your page, but I'm sure you saw the more celebrities who not on your page that yeah, you don't facts. take pictures with. Facts. So how do you get connected with them? You say you tight with them. How did that relationship come? All right, well, I got a homie named David. He was, like, over the men's department in the mirror in Cali. I actually wanted to quit this shit. I ain't gonna lie. Like, my partner, Quan died, and two other partners died. So I was mm-hmm. like, man, oh, I that ain't my focus. He was like, no. So he called me one day on FaceTime. He was like, who you favorite rapper is? I'm like, the baby. Mm-hmm. He was like, all right, I got something for you. So I'm like, all right. So I'm sitting there watching YouTube. He called me. It's like, here go Lil Baby. And Lil Baby really was on camera. So I'm like, the fuck? <laughs> so, you know, we exchanged info. Uh-huh. And from then on, like, anytime, like, Polo G, Gunner, Lamicha Le- Le- Gunner came in the mirror the same day. Mm-hmm. So I was on the phone both them. Polo G, um, who else he called me? He called me all type of people. Mm-hmm. So from them, I met more people and woo wow. And just and that's trickled just, down. Yeah, that's just how it trickled down. But I already knew like some people from Instagram, like Tyrese Max, who played for the 76ers. Mm-hmm. I mean, his uncle, like this. You know what I'm saying? So when I met Tyrese, you know, we already like hit it off. And then okay. more NBA players came following me. Mm-hmm. And Lonzo Ball, that's my dog. Mm-hmm. And you know, that's how it happened. Okay, um, dang. How, how is it? Did you see yourself doing this? Back back then, I don't know. <laughs> I did, still see that. Uh huh. What did you see yourself doing growing up, man, bro? I had no plan. I'm gonna keep it G with you. Like I had no plan. Like the we, reason I like really started taking it serious in like 2018 is because I went to sneaker con and I made like 1500 dollars. That's small, but in yeah, the but day, it was big. For to, yeah, but it was big to me back then. Now it's like 1500 dollars a day at a sneaker event. I need to make 20,000. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So I was like, damn. I really made fifteen hundred dollars of profit today. <laughs> Let me, you know, start tapping in this more. Okay. Um, you spoke. You speak of. Um, you spoke of sneaker kind. How is it getting into these events? Do you have to have like a certain status? Do you pay to get in? Do they invite you? Well, anybody can get in, bro. Mm-hmm. Like you just have to pay for your table. The tables they're like three hundred dollars a table. That's not bad. Yeah, it's not. So I'm going to sneaker exit June twelfth. That's a like a smaller sneaker convention in Atlanta, but mm-hmm. like. The dude, Tim, who run it, he he from Atlanta. So, you know, he get ev- the whole city to come. Everybody, you know everybody. what I'm saying? And I'm always in it anyways. Mm-hmm. So, I'm going there. And then Sneaker Con, double back in Atlanta, June 25th, 26th. It's a two-day event. So, that's going. if I get two tables, that's $1,200 for the weekend. Okay. 
Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It might sound like a lot, but I mean, if you coming out with smoke, yeah, like thirty thousand dollars worth of inventory, mm-hmm. you're gonna you're gonna you're gonna sell out because the the thing about these sneaker conventions, which is good, is you get to reach people from other cities. Mm-hmm. Give them your business card. You know, you get to meet store owners because you know New Orleans. We only have we don't have no retail resale shops, huh? Down here, we have Peddler, but Peddler and Kenner. Yeah, we don't have any resale shops, so we get to connect with like people from other stores because what sells good for me might not sell good for somebody else, or vice versa. Mm-hmm. So you know, we get to exchange info. All right, look, I got this. It don't sell for me. Boom. You know, here you sell. It. You know, mm-hmm. stuff like that. The Sneaker Express, um, where did the name come from? The Sneaker Express? All right, well, my homie Jermaine, he gave me the name because I was thinking about a, um, a business name when I started. He was like, man, the Sneaker Express. And I'm like, yeah, I fuck with it. That's why. Quick like that, huh? Yeah. Um, what's the end goal for you? Do you want a storefront? I would, bro, like, I literally just was in the eight looking at stores like last week. Mm-hmm. That's what I want to do, but I like the traveling aspect more and being around celebs and hanging with them, partying with them and shit. Right. That, like, that makes sense because if you at a storefront, a lot of people busy can't like come to you all the yeah, time. Yeah, and then this is another thing, the overhead, like you gotta pay rent, you gotta right. pay employees, you gotta pay water. And then I go to conventions, get inventory. So I'm not gonna be able to be in a the shop then, you know. Uh-huh. So I was thinking about a shop like two years from now and let me get like a thousand pairs and then just go from now. Okay. Um at the at the in the sneaker game, a lot of people um on, on Twitter and social media I see they talk a lot about like gouging and sneaker people running up the price and ruining the experience for the regular people who can't afford like the five hundred yeah who can't afford five hundred six thousand dollar pairs. What's your thoughts on that? Well, bro, it's supply and demand, mm-hmm. basic economics. You know what I'm saying? When the, when the supply don't meet the demand, the price gonna go up. That's what anything in life. All right, so they probably say, oh, this is just shoes, but, I mean, if StockX got it for 500 what you want me to sell it for? Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, why would I sell it to you for two, 300 and I could get an extra 200 somewhere else? Right. Like, you know what I'm saying? But this is what I tell anybody that's trying to get in this space. Anybody that's trying to resell, you need money to get into this. Mm-hmm. Like, it's flipping that one no pedal and going around. up, that's not going to happen no more, bro. Because, mm-hmm. like we said earlier, you can't go to the store, so where are you gonna get it from? You don't have relationships with these Footlock employees. You know it don't make sense if you only give them one pair to go to a sneaker con- sneaker convention and get that one pair. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So how, you know you need to come in with some bread. Okay. That makes sense. Now, what's the um? I guess you say you need to come in with some bread. What's the 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 minimum amount of money you think somebody would need to start? A and with space business? like regular reselling a bot and a boat. Um. You choose shit. All right, I'm going to do both. Regular reselling, I'll say like 30 k mm-hmm. because you got to think. 10 times out of 10, you're going to pay resale. This is how I break it down. Like I said, all right, you pay, you hit the green button on stock eggs, right? Save a shoe, 350 right? Mm-hmm. Add tax and fees, you're going to be paying another $80. I mean, another $30. All right, so that's 380 All right, so say if I go to a convention. I'll be like, all right, market on this 350 Do got it for 350 Let me get it for 330 in cash. Boom. I'm saving $20 on the green button. Mm-hmm. But as opposed to I add the tax and fees, so I'm really up fifty. Like I add an extra fifty, and I make a hundred a shoe. You see uh-huh. what I'm saying? So say like if you have thirty k and you could do that, like spend fifteen k at a sneaker convention, flip that in the month, come back, use that profit, and keep going, keep going. Mm-hmm. That that makes the most sense. But if you somebody that just trying to um, get two, three pairs here, and man, don't you waste your time. Okay. The game too advanced now. Okay. Um, now as far as the oh my my you good, go ahead. Right. As far as the botting space. Mm-hmm. Don't jump in there unless you got 100K. Damn. A plus. Because this is what people don't realize. You have to buy proxies, which is like web, uh, VPNs or whatever. Mm-hmm. I don't know if you're familiar with that. Yeah, I know VPNs. All right. So you got to buy that. Gigabytes of that shit, like $70 for 10 gigs. You know what I'm saying? That shit high. Then you got to get servers, like dedicated servers. Because mm-hmm. my, my setup big. Mm-hmm. I got like seven, eight bots. I got the best shit. So you got to get servers. Then you have to like pay for a group, which is like forty, fifty dollars. It's called a cook group. Like they give you early links and all of that shit. Mm-hmm. And then you actually have to learn your bots. You know what I'm saying? And that's just monthly fees you'll have to pay. That's not even getting a shoe. You mm-hmm. see what I'm saying? So say it been bro when I Behind first started off, and still not, bro. It might be some days I don't get that shit, mm-hmm. and you'll be pissed off like fuck. I ain't get this. I won't quit. And you can't quit. Mm-hmm. 
know what I'm saying? That's why you have to have a nice cushion if you want to get in that space. Mm-hmm. Okay. Now, that's the behind the scenes that go, damn. Yeah, bro. I'm giving y'all everything, bro. <laughs> Facts. I ain't know nothing about bots, all the equipment and software you're talking about. Is there any other things that you didn't touch on that the regular sneaker reseller doesn't know about? Yeah, like they saying, oh, y'all hiding in stock eggs. Well, well, of course we won't be hiding in stock eggs because the difference between dealing with stock eggs and dealing with somebody like me is with stock eggs, you don't know, you know what I'm saying, who you're dealing with. You probably, let's say you get a shoe, right, and you see the stock eggs stuff going on. You compare to check, check at, they tell you it's fake. You hit stock eggs, be like, man, this shoe fake. I want my money back. You know what they're going to tell you? Mm-hmm. Sell it back to us. Right. And you go get your money. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You're going to lose money on top of that. Right. So say if you got a Jordan 1, a Jordan 1 feet, mm-hmm. you're going to lose like $30, $40 something back to How stock X plays it is, if somebody say they fake, all right, bro, we're going to sell it back to the next customer. All right. And whoever don't catch it, that's shoe sold. That's how they play the game. Suppose to somebody like me, you can hit me up like, ooh, wop, I want to shoot. Cool. You know, I'm telling you, I'm telling you right now where it's coming from. So I know it's real. Like anytime I go to a convention, brother, I get a legit check. They have legit checkers at the conventions for free. So say if I buy this, for example, like, here, see, ch- check this out. They're going, all right, it's good. Put the stamp on. Mm-hmm. Boom. It's legit. You know what I'm saying? That's a whole difference. Either it's coming from a website or a legit, com- uh, uh, legit convention. Now, now, a legit checker, what's the difference between a legit checker and an authorizer at StockX? Because when you order from StockX, they say, we send it in to Stock X Warehouse. They got to make sure it's real. They got to approve it. And you take like two or three weeks, then send it to you. What's All the right. between that? I'm going to get into that. Good thing you brought that up. Mm-hmm. All right. With the Stock X people, all they do is bend a shoe, smell it, jump on to the so next. It could be a regular person like me at Stock Yeah. X. yeah. Mm-hmm. But see, legit checkers, they have they actually take courses. And it's like, all right, we're going to smell a shoe. We're going to, you know, Every put the black light, on. look at the stitching, all that. Like, I got a black light at home. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Look at the stitching. All right. Boom. You good. Go. Mm-hmm. But if it's fake, they're going to let you know why it's fake. You know, you don't get that same interaction with them with right. StockX. You okay. know what I'm saying? Now, um, I want to um, get into the peop- the um, warehouses that make the shoes. Some of this, a lot of, also a lot of people complain about the shoes only cost a couple dollars to make and the big brands, um, Nike, they sell them for 200 and they only cost like $8, $10, $5. Mm-hmm. What's your thoughts on these people, the people making the shoes? I mean, supply and demand, bro. I mean, what you going to do about it? All right, this is what people don't realize. The stores, like Foot Lock and them, they really don't get them shoes for $150. They get them for $75 in bulk. Right. Uh, you you know about that? Yes. All right. Most people don't. Mm-hmm. So say like Nike tells them, all right, you got to sell this Jordan one for one sixty. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So you gonna get all these for eighty dollars? You got to sell it for one sixty. That's your profit. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So I mean, how can you go against what the brands want? Mm-hmm. I mean, that's the company. Thanks. You have a, you um you heard about um when Amazon was trying to buy Jordan to get their Jordans on the um Amazon site. I mean, I know I got I got partners in other cities that sell shit on Amazon, and they make hell a, a lot of money. Mm-hmm. So that would be good, bro. Uh, I think um, Nike um, declined because they felt that um, it was going to be too accessible because you know everybody's on Amazon and putting their shoes on. There and, and see, Amazon, that's the thing would have been cheaper. And see, that's what I'm about to tell you. Mm-hmm. Nike wants resellers. Mm-hmm. It might sound crazy, but think about it. We drive the hype up. Right. So say if we got like. 400 pairs of this, right. and this shoe going for 400. I mean, now he's going to be like, oh, we're going to do what we can to stop resellers <laughs> and bots. And, like, yeah. for Christmas, when it was like, the putting the Grinch act, mm-hmm. and it was like, oh, man, we're going to stop, we're going to pass this bill. You ain't heard about it since, right? Mm-hmm. All right, yeah, this, all that shit bullshit, man. Right, it's kind of like they need resellers. Though. They do need us, right. because, think about it, the general consumer is only going to buy their one pair. Yep. A lot of shit going to sell. A lot of shit going to sit, my, my bad. Mm-hmm. They don't want their product to sit. Even though it's sitting now, mm-hmm. because, I mean, bro, everything going up, cost of living, et cetera. Yep. People got to pick and choose what they're going to do. But Facts. Now, overall in the shoe game, what's the best part for you? The you best part? Yeah. Bro, like, the... I, uh, <laughs> what's the best part of this shit? 
Bro, I just love it, bro. Like, you can see how I am right. Like, I'm really uh, passionate about it. Thanks, chopping it up. Breaking every single detail down. Um, what's the worst part? The worst part? Dealing with ignorant people. Nigga, so you, you said that way quickly. <laughs> Real talk. Because, like you said, people don't understand. Like, this you 200 in the store. Why are you? I'm like, you, you, see the, you see what market is? You ain't no stock X. I know I'm not. <laughs> I'm me. Yeah, exactly. But, like, you get to deal with me directly and you're not going to have no issues. Like your shoe gonna come uh wrapped wrapped up like in the plastic I showed you. Perfect condition. Yeah, perfect condition. It's gonna be a real authentic shoe. Mm -hmm. You know, like yeah, you might be spending an extra 60, 50, 60 more than what you would with stock ice with taxi fees, but it's here right now. It's authentic, you know, you don't have to wait two weeks. So I mean, what you gonna do? Um, what's the worst um what's the worst interaction you had with a customer through DMs or personal experience? Funniest or worse? Um, we can do both of them. All right, <laughs> the worst one was stories. when somebody told me, you taxing and, ooh, and you know, I'm like, how am I taxing? This is what it is. With It was the UNC dunks. Mm -hmm. This chick wanted, she was like, how much? I told her, I said a six and a half. It was going for like 480. Mm -hmm. But keep in mind, I paid one ninety dollars for it. So I really wasn't, you know, whatever. Mm -hmm. I could have charged them more because we tax the fees. It was 450, but I'm like, all right, I can throw 480. She's like, you taxing. I pulled up on StockX and like, I'm taxing it's 450 with tax and fees. She's like, yeah, but uh, StockX, they be tripping. Them shoes not worth it. <laughs> like, Ooh, I, but I'm like, I right, bet. <laughs> so you, you go back and forth with them? Do all that. What no. I need to do all that for? Mm -hmm. You can tell you good. That's that's it. Like, you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Either you're going to buy it or you're not. Because mm -hmm. I, I know in my head, everything I get going to sell. Mm -hmm. So either you're going to buy it or somebody, somebody else going to buy it. I'm not worrying right. about it. Like, I'm not about to fuss with you. None of that. I want what I want. Mm -hmm. Like, I might knock down $20. Even my partners will tell you, they would be like, man, that bitch you shoot him. Man, that bitch you shoot ain't about to, he ain't about to do all that. Just some slight shit if you feel it good one day. I yeah, have to be like, taking all right, $20. Bro, I'll take all $20, though. I ain't tripping <laughs> off it. Uh -huh. But the funniest one, bro, is, bro, when people be trying to send me fakes. That'd be the funniest interaction because it'd be known fakes. Like, there's this dude, he uh, wanted to sell me some SB dunks or something. Mm -hmm. He was like, man, I got them from Dubai. I'm like, huh? And I'm pointing him everything that's wrong with it. Mm -hmm. and, he, and he was like, man, they real. I know the people that uh, from Supreme. I'm like, bro, no, you don't. Like, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, I know you don't. Like, don't, don't even much, don't play with me like that. Thanks. <laughs> now, this. The Sneak Express, I keep saying Dusty Express. That's good. You're looking to get the storefront in two years, maybe. You love the interaction with the celebrities. And the worst part is the ignorant people. At the end of the day, what's a good day for you for selling sneakers? What's the end price for you? A good day? You're like, oh, yeah, I made my shit. I'm good today. If I can make like $600 a day, I'm good. Mm -hmm. I ain't tripping on it. Okay. And... When you don't sell that, what's the? Do you ever have sales? You like you say, you don't knock down prices. Like if you got something sitting at home, you <laughs> for what? You say no sales. Somebody gonna come get it. Yeah, like for what? What am I gonna knock something down for? Like, don't get me wrong, the sneaker market been going down lately. Mm -hmm. So like, I have to adjust with it. So say like, if a shoe is four hundred today and it drops down to two eighty, I gotta go down. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's my sale. But other than that, I'm not about to. For what? Now, Table this podcast. Any last words for the people, bro? Any other details that you think you need to let them know about? Something you forgot or something? Support your local resellers. For that's sure. really it. I mean, why would you support a big brand like StockX that's getting called multiple times for fakes and you have a core good, good resellers that you can go to anytime? Mm -hmm. That if I don't have you size, somebody else got it. You know what I'm saying? Okay. That's basically it, bro. Oh, uh, one last question. What's your thoughts on GOAT, the GOAT website? Goat is your best option. Mm -hmm. They hired in StockX, but all right, I got a homie that worked for Goat. Mm -hmm. They personally sent him to conventions to get shoes for Goat so they can mark it up for the uh, they have instant verification to where it's already in the warehouse. Mm -hmm. But what people don't know about that is they get this shit from they get that shit from conventions. Mm -hmm. So that's your best which call it because it's already checked by like authenticators and stuff, and they ship it right to you next day. So, I would prefer gold over StockX. You might pay a little more, mm -hmm. but, I mean, you're going to get what you want. All right. 
Uh, Tape Business Podcast, man. The first sneaker plug, shoe plug, celebrity plug, sneaker reseller, all those things. Great episode. Once again, Tape Business Podcast. Y'all listen on Apple or Spotify. Come to YouTube. Come see some of the good shoes. You want to give them a look at the shoes one more time, bro? Put them on the table. Let them see it. Uh, <laughs> the Travis's. Yeah. Travis Scott, man. Back on Nike Check. His, uh, you know when he said he was canceled? Mm-hmm. They're not canceling. He dropping his. Oh, I'm his sure he's not canceling. Come on, man. They just Drawing for let military die, blacks. Huh? <laughs> what you say, brother? I can't. He can't hear you. I heard him. I'm, <laughs> I'm Joe's. <laughs> And you could buy a pair. I just can't give you that specifically. That's and this is the about. exclusive Z. Never wore. You never wore the Travis Scott's either. He never wore two of these shoes that he bought. These are his personal shoes. I got way more. And I got the trophies. Mm-hmm. Show that bottom one more time. That bottom, nice. Yeah, that's it nice. Was like Converse. This was the shoe of the year last year. And this was the, sh- the Travis was the shoe of the year in like 2018, 2019. Okay. So. That's it, y'all. That's the three shoes he brought here. Y'all let us know. Other sneakers reseller, come on, man. Show us y'all. So show us y'all process, y'all favorite. You gotta shows. get Derek Kicks and three Y on I, it. I um I um text Derek Kicks. He um hit me back. We gotta um set the date and facts. We're gonna chop it up on here though. But I appreciate you for throwing that alley hoop and we out. All right, bet.